We arrive at section 3 and we will talk a little bit here. This is not an explanation. This is a talk. We will discuss. We will read together the chapter of the of the uh, textbook. So this is a very interesting, consider it as a very interesting article. It shows you the evolution of the uses of multimedia. Okay, so multimedia past, present, and future. Early history of multimedia, we, we begin to talk about multimedia since we had our news, our first newspaper, because newspapers are considered the first mass communication medium. It is a medium by which you communicate with people, you send them messages. Okay, this is a passive um, communication because you only the publisher sends messages to the users but this is a communication medium and before uh, images were uh, printed they were hand drawn the graphics and the images they were hand drawn then uh, in, nine, in eight, 1826 um, Joseph Nicephore Niepce captured the first natural image for, from his window. Imagine it's, it's not even uh, 200 years, still un, below 200 years, that uh, the first natural image from the window was captured. After that, Alphonse Giroux built his first commercial camera with a double box design by which he can adjust the zoom. So this is the first camera that was built in uh, intention to be sold in the market. And by the end of 19th century, yani, um, we have a film-based cameras. We have cameras that have film. You put a film and you shoot photos. And this is the figure 1.1, which shows a very um, precious vintage dry plate camera. We continue in the history. This is interesting, as I say, in, 19, in 1877, in 1877, Thomas Edison, um, we have our uh, phonograph. This is the one for Thomas Edison, which is the first device able to record and reproduce sound. Before 1877, we weren't able to reproduce and to record sound. And this is the phonograph. And re remark his plate, its plate, it, it, it marks how much it is important, this thing. <coughs> then Alexander Graham Bell impro improved this uh, phonograph. And then uh, Berliner also put his attribution. In the twenties, in the twentieth century, the quality of the sound became close to the original. Okay, it is until the twentieth century, not before. Let us continue. In the mid nineteen eighties, we got our audio tapes, our CDs. Until the mid nineteen eighties, those audio tapes. We had them. Okay. See with me. This is an evolution of audio storage media from left to right. An Edison cylinder. Uh, on this cylinder, he was able to record audio and then was invented the vinyl record, the flat vinyl record. And now you can see them in the collector with the collectors. I have a vinyl record for such a singer and for such a song. And then came the reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tape and then the cassette. All of my students who are listening to my lecture now know nothing about this cassette. We spent our teenage times listening to songs on this cassette. And then came the CD. CDs now we are, uh, we, we are um, getting rid of now. Everything passed on cloud. Imagine how rapid the evolution is. Less than 200 years, less than 100 years, less than 100 years. We continue in 1830. In 
parallel, we have the motion pictures conceived to observe motion too rapid for perception by the human eyes. So, in 1930, in uh, 1887, also again, Edison um, had a contribution in motion picture camera. In 1910, from 1910 to 1927, we have our beautiful silent feature films. You know them. Um, Laurel E. Hardy, Charlie Chaplin, you can find them on YouTube. There is no music, there is no sound, there is only silent feature films. And until 1927, we had our first sound inside films. Early history of multimedia in 1895, Marconi had his first wireless radio transmission at Pontecchio, Italy. Okay, we have our first radio transmission. Think about every invention that it was a war invention. Everything, including World Wide Web, was a war invention, was a need in, during wars, and then it became a common use. So in 1901, radio wave beamed across the Atlantic and uh, invented for telegraph first, the radio was invented to send telegraphs. Radio now is a major medium for audio broadcasting. In 1909, Marconi shared the Nobel, the Nobel Prize for Physics. Okay, you remember Marconi, who transmitted his first radio. In 1884, Paul uh, Nipkow. Um, a 23-year-old uh, university student in Germany patented the first electromechanical television system. And in 1907, we have our uh, cathode ray tubes, the old TVs, the fat TVs we had in our houses. Those are the cathode ray tubes. They are be they send beams to to illuminate the screen. So this the TV. We are talking about the TVs. It's only in 1907. Those of you who have old grandmothers and grandfathers can ask them. When they were young, they didn't have a TV, even black and white TV. In 1920, CRT-based TV established video as a commonly available medium and has since changed the world of mass communication. So until 1920, people can now um, can now watch TV and not only newspaper they get the news from they get also from TV see how close it is we are in 2020 now from analog to, min um, uh, to digital medias all of what we cited now are analog format in which time which is a variable of the signal is continuous representation of the input. You can see this concept more in detail in uh, signal processing courses and data transmission courses. But remember of the wavelet signal you studied in math. In analog um, signals, it is like so. The connection between computers and digital media, the media data represented is now being represented using discrete binary format and emerged over a very short period. So that's the analog signals, the things that you saw here on tapes emerged to digital data. So here it was continuous and on those medias it became discrete. So now we will continue our uh, uh, important dates, important years, and important events that happened during the history of digital media. In 1967, after your parents were born, not before, Nicolas Negroponte, he was on the head of the architecture machine group at the MIT. And this group had a very uh, huge contribution in the digital media. In 1969, Nelson and Van Damme at Brown University was uh, the one to mention early hypertext editor that was called Fress. 
In 76, the MIT Architecture Machine Group that was founded on 1967 proposed the multiple media concept. In 1978, we have our first video disc. And in 1982, our compact disc CD was available by Philips and by Sony. And it was considered a standard for digital audio data. You can now have uh, the artists have their songs, their singers recorded over these CDs. And it replaced analog magnetic type, tape. See, so until 1982, we were using magnetic, magnetic tapes. In 1985, Negroponte and Wisner co-founded the MIT Media Lab and the MIT Media Lab is also an, uh, an important lab that defined some other standards. When, when I say standards, I say methods, I say conventions, I say algorithms that were used uh, all over the world. Uh, 1990 in 19, we are beginning to approach from the date of your, from your birth date. We are here uh, at your birthday. I, our birth date, I know uh, you are uh, maybe 20 years old, but at the end of this slide, it will become near your birth. So this is considered, uh, um, um, according to science, this is considered a very, very near history. We are not if you if you study signal processing if you study um analytics if you study physics if you study chemistry we are not talking about uh, about short history we are talking about very very uh, far history so in 1991 um okay in 1990 um the apple multimedia lab with a staff of 100 uh, people only, and it was for education. And in 1991, we talk about the first standard for video, for digital video, MPEG-1, and the introduction of PDAs, which are the personal digital assistant, which are the small computers, if you want. And in 1996, we talk now about PDAs with no keyboard. In 1990, we have our JPEG that was the, uh, that was accomplished before, but it was accepted as an international standard for digital image compression. And now when we say, send me your photo, it's automatically in JPEG format. So JPEG is a standard that has a format, and we will talk about it later. In 1992, we have our first audio multicast on the multicast back bone. And in 1995, we have the Java language that was created for platform independent application development, widely used for developing multimedia application. In 1996, we have our DVD. So until 1996, we had a CD, but not DVDs. High quality, full length movies. So we have our movies of high quality, not high definition yet. In 1998, we have MP3 audio players with 32 megabyte flash memory. And it was considered a wow thing. Uh, hypermedia, World Wide Web, and Internet. So, we talk about multimedia, integration to enable rich interaction among medias and between media and human beings. We mentioned this in section one of this chapter. In 1945, as part of MIT's post-war, okay, after post-war, Bosch introduced Memex. It was a forerunner of the World Wide Web. So before WWW, we introduced Memex. Read, you can read about it. After World War II, we have 6,000 scientists that were interested. And in 1960, Ted Nelson, through Xanadu project, introduced the term hypertext. 
hypertext in a book you have a linear medium you read one page after the other in a hypertext you can go from a content to another in a non-linear way so we continue multimedia applications roots in nuclear physics and believe it or not it is uh, created it was created for nuclear physics in 1990 Tim Berners-Lee proposed the WWW to CERN what is CERN? CERN is equal to European Center for Nuclear Research to why he proposed the World Wide Web not for you to enjoy your favorite YouTubes but to organize and share the and share their work and experimental results. His team invented HTML, HTTP, for this purpose too, and then we have the XML, the XSL family, and so on. Now we will move to a new uh, subsection of the third section. We are here by, and we will talk about multimedia now, multimedia in the new millennium, new generation of social, mobile, and cloud computing, multimedia processing and sharing. The, the, the role of internet is not as was intended to be. It has evolved from original use as a communication tool to provide easier and faster sharing of an infinite supply of information. Multimedia content are enriched. High definition video and 3D multi-view videos captured and browsed by PCs. They are stored and processed with remote cloud resources. Users are engaged to be part of a social ecosystem and they are not anymore passive. A user can contribute, any user can upload photos, videos, can comment, can share his knowledge, can, can edit a Wikipedia page, can do whatever he likes. Every user is a contributor. Revolution. This is a revolution and it is driven by the penetration of the 3G and 4G wireless network and smart mobile devices, high intuitive interfaces and rich multimedia functionalities. I feel that I don't need to, um, to explain such things. You already, not only computer science students, you are also people of this era. You use them. You use them every day. Every single point mentioned here, you are aware of it. Integrated with online social networking and we have instant media content generation and sharing instantly. You take your photo, you take your smartphone, you, you go live on Facebook. This is an instant content generation and sharing. You are sharing it with all of your friends, if not publicly. So to continue my stall in the new millennium, we will cite these dates and what happened in these dates. In 2000, the web size became greater than 1 billion pages. Sony invented Blu-ray disc prototypes. Okay, not only DVD, you have Blu-ray. In 2001, Napster, the first peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Okay, we have our first peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and it was used for MP3 music. Entity Docomo in Japan launched the first commercial 3G wireless network. In 2003, Skype has its peer-to-peer -peer voice over internet and now in 2003 people can talk together and they don't need to pay for international uh, phone bills that are very very high in 2004 web 2 we have the web version 2.0 the virtual community example we have social networking we have blogs we have wikis etc Facebook was invented by you know who Mark Zuckerberg and Flickr by Ludicorp. What happened in 2005? In 2005, YouTube for video sharing purchased by Google, so Google by YouTube. In 
uh, we have a, a YouTube in 2005 and Google buy it in 2006. Google launched online map service and we all know it and it's very interesting and we all use it. And satellite imaging and real tra time traffic plus street view later on. So we all use these things and we somehow cannot live without them. And this was only in 2005. Imagine our lives before 2005. Imagine when we used to travel without Google Maps, without Waze. How did we used to go from one area in a city to the other? Imagine we opened, we used to open uh, a paper map. Of course, there were some multimedia applications like Google Maps, but it was not as efficient as that. In 2006, we have Twitter with more than 500 million registered users in 2012, 340 million tweets per day. Amazon Web Service also came in 2006, and Nintendo Wii home video game console was on market. From 2007 until 2010, and we will stop on 2013 from 2007 what happened Apple released its iPhone with running iOS with a touch screen with Apple Store mobile apps this is in only in 2007 and of course Lebanese people were the first to buy this and then also a Google Android mobile OS Plus Open Handset Alliance was launched with a consortium. What is an Open Handset Alliance? It is a consortium of hardware, software, and telecommunication companies devoted to advancing open standards for mobile devices. The first Android-powered phone appeared in 2008 with Google Play, with tablet, computer, iOS, Android, and Windows with larger touchscreen also appeared. All of this in 2008. Let me put this as a title. Like the others. What happened in 2009? We have the first LTE long-term evolution network set up in Oslo, Norway, Stockholm, and Sweden, making an important step towards 4G wireless networking. And we, maybe you remember the Avatar film, which was James Cameron film created, uh, Cameron film created a surge on the interest in 3D video. It was. Um, a 3D video. In 2010, we have Netflix happily, and uh, we have uh, all this information about Netflix. Previously, a DVD rental service provider. Imagine a rental service provider that migrates to Amazon AWS cloud computing platform and created master copies of digital films from movie studios are stored on Amazon. Um, as three for each film it was encoded into over 50 different versions based on video resolution audio quality and languages etc and we have more than one petabyte of data stored on amazon cloud and also in 2010 we have the microsoft kinect which is a, also a console game horizontal bar with full body 3d motion capture facial recognition and voice recognition capability for its game console Xbox 360. So the Kinect was able to capture motions, face, uh, facial expressions and body motions and body gestures. Milestones also in the new millennium. In 2012 we had HTML5 that was like no, not like no other. In a, is a W3C candidate recommendation, provides support for latest multimedia format, so dealing with multimedia is much more easier with HTML5. 
and the ability to run on low power devices such as smartphones and tablets. In 2013, Sony PlayStation 4. Okay, PlayStation for you guys who know it, for you who does, don't stop playing FIFA 20. Video game console integrated with Gaika, Gay K, a cloud based gaming service that offers streaming video game content. 4K resolution TV started to be available in the customer, the consumer market. Okay, all of this, lots of information, really interesting and nice. You will not be asked to uh, put them in the exams, but I really recommend that you listen and at least read this, this section of chapters. This is culture, this is general information, this is eye-opening to see how much our field, the computer science field, is evolving. A math teacher, a physics teacher, a chemistry teacher will do doesn't have to read a lot from year to year. But on the opposite, we we have to keep ourselves teached. We have to keep ourselves involved. We have to keep learning. So now I move to multimedia in the future. I will discuss with you what the book says, what some interesting ideas appeared and they are all true and they are all very nice. And we as uh, researchers are trying to, to put some contributions in one or another of the points. So, multimedia research is uh, considered, as I told you, uh, relatively to the other domains, is considered young and vigorously growing. We have many exciting topics together. The old interest of multimedia Let's say 30 years before, the interest were to, for example, to have a program, an application that detects the shot, shot detection. What is shot detection? It's not like gunshot detection. It's when the uh, movie changes from one scene to another. Suppose you are on the beach and now you are shooting inside the home or inside the home itself within the same scene. You are shooting face of the dad and then you, you turn the camera to shoot the, fur, uh, the or you use another camera to shoot the face of the daughter. This is shot detection where the movie is when it was analog, where it was taped, where it was um, um, put together. It's not a continuous scene, it's another scene. So this was an issue, but now it is resolved. Video classification, whether this video is a cartoon, whether this video is a violence movie, or it is a more morning movie, a, a talk show, etc. Those, was old, those were old interests. New challenges due to the abundance of online video came. We now, our interests as researchers, our interests are camera-based object tracking. We would like to know this car. We would like to track it automatically. Face detection and recognition. Okay, you know that there are libraries to detect faces, but to recognize them also. So, for example, to know that Mr. X entered this small at this time and he moved to store X, store Y, store Z, etc. And he left the mall at this time. And if Mr. X that was identified, he has made a theft. Maybe we want another time when he comes back, we want to recognize him and tell him, Hello, you have an unpaid bill. Face detection is a very important, this is a silly example I gave you, but face detection is a very important topic. Event detection for security. Imagine with me this, this scene, a person leaving a bag unattended in an airport. How much panic does this scene do? Uh, we would like to detect this scene automatically. We would like to detect that a person left a bag and no one came to take this bag and this bag is now in the airport with no one who um, attended it. 
and this is a very dangerous thing and if you happen to f to travel with such a scene you will know that all the areas will be emptied and the bag will be destroyed immediately advanced modeling Advanced modeling from 2D videos to 3D capture technology acquire dynamic characteristics of human facial expression during speech to synthesize highly realistic facial animation from speech for low bandwidth application. Imagine I can detect and I can generate uh, later the 3D uh, facial for a uh, for another application to like avatar for example multiple views from several cameras or from a single camera under differing lighting can actually acquire data so to give both the shape and surface property of a material if you have multiple view, uh, uh, views for the same thing you can view it in 3d you can see what the light is doing on its surface so you can deduce its pattern its its shape etc Generate synthetic graphic models, photorealistic video quality, synthesis of virtual actors, and use all this technology to 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 help handicapped person with poor vision, for example, to help elderly, to help children. We make them virtual personage to read them stories, baby. And. Interests in the future involve also the eyewares, the Google Glass, for example. An optical head-mounted display enables interactive display for its user. You can look at something at the same time it, you can Google it. Communicate using natural language voice commands, and we are all experiencing this. So the wearable, wearable something you wear, computing of great potentials. We come to our favorite topic, online social media appeared in the past decade, changing information generation and sharing. Research on social media is likely one of the most important areas under scrutiny. Let me correct this error. Okay, research on social media. 100,000 academic article paper per year, 1,100 paper, scientific paper published. You put a small like, you say, I will put a like for the photo of my friend, I will put a like for the tweet of my friend, for the tweet of a certain political person. This small like is very important for researchers because they analyze math behavior and not only your behavior so through this analyzed anal uh, analysis they will they will deduce lots of things so topics crowdsourcing for multimedia so crowd from multiple input of a large number of human contributors it to uh, large attention example having people provide tags also what they say they say you can tag your friends you can make um, hashtags you can uh, comment on this photo and they take it as inputs for their learning systems aid in understanding visual content of image and video if you tag three this is a three okay amazon mechanical turk uh, to outsource such time-consuming tasks as semantic video annotation to a large number of workers who are willing to work for a small reward or just for fun okay just for fun annotate me this video but the reality is they need to annotate this video in order to advance analyze the sentiment analyze sentiment look at me to this sentence sorry i will go back Analyze sentiment such as the popularity of a particular brand name as evidenced by reading several thousand tweets on the subject. Did you see the new iPhone? I have my new iPhone selfie with my new iPhone. And they will analyze all of this data. 
Digital fashion aims to develop smart clothing. Look at this last point here in this slide. Digital fashion aims to develop smart clothing. You wear a pant or a t-shirt that is a smart clothing that can communicate certain thoughts and feelings to be broadcast automatically for exchange with other equipment with similar technology. My t-shirt will tell your t-shirt that I was angry today. Imagine. Executable academic paper. And this is very interesting for those of you who will be continuing the research um, academic path. In science and engineering, the traditional way is like approximately this way. You read a publication of paper in academic journal. You do, you do a great job, so you publish your paper in an academic journal. But you say, I, my algorithm, I tried it over 1,000 image and it gave me this result. I used the, for example, let's say min-max function to deduce uh, if the faces are present in the, I'm saying, not, I'm saying anything just to give you an example. But the reader who reads your paper, suppose your paper was accepted, but the reader who reads your paper will not see the 1,000 image that you used how he want he wants to try his own method he cannot there are online data sets but not for all the articles and even though he has your data set he doesn't have your exact code unless you are generous enough so when he mails you when he emails you you give him your code but but usually researchers don't communicate codes to others because they are afraid that they will they will find mistakes or they will overpass them and publish better research than them. So what is the new idea here in this slide? It is executable academic paper. Not only I publish my idea, but also I can publish my data set and my code. And like executable program, you can run it and you can, and you can try it. Other applications, also you can read them in the textbook. And uh, now we will discuss some multimedia interest and we will finish by an exercise that you should do at home for the next week. Some multimedia interest, social event detection for social multimedia as indicated by collections of multimedia content that was captured by people and uploaded to social media sites. So uh, everyone was in this party, this was a national party, this is Independence Day, for example. All of a sudden, the next day, everybody is posting images with the Lebanese flag. So we are interested to detect, to automatically detect this social event. Maybe it was not a happy event after all. Maybe it's not Independence Day, maybe it is a bomb um, uh, attenta. So another topic, search and hyperlinking of television content for a particular subject and generating use for hyperlink automated intelligently. Now I try to upload to an, a, my newly opened YouTube channel. Um, YouTube just told me, don't, don't uh, put your own tags. I will extract them automatically from within your video. Although my English is not perfect and my content may be not perfect, but he is able to extract the keywords and the tags from my video. He is able to generate. So maybe if I mention YouTube inside my video, he will link it automatically to resources. Another topic is geo-coordinate prediction for social multimedia, estimating the GPS coordinate of an image and video using tags and audio and users. Oh my God. You take a selfie and then without putting your location and even without, even when you erase the location uh, information from within your photo bef before you post it, based on the content of this photo, being able to say, oh, this is Italy. You are in front of Evil Tower. So estimating the GPS coordinates. Um, violent scene detection in films. And this is a very, very, uh, very important topic. And especially if the film is reality uh, surveillance camera. 
preserving privacy in surveillance video so okay i want to i want to take um, i want to have a surveillance video on the street because later if there are terrorist attacks i want to see who passed through the street but uh, for other issues i want to obscure the private information for example if i want to put it on google earth sorry sorry Spoken term web search, searching for audio content within audio content by using an audio query. So you can say, Google, find me presentation that talks about multimedia. And he will find you my presentation, not because it there is the word multimedia inside, but because I spoke it in the voice. Question answering for the spoken web variant on the above. Okay. Google, can you tell me please how to do brownies, chocolate brownies, and match spoken question with collection of spoken answers, not only text queries. We all know that we can do that using text, but I'm saying audio queries. Soundtrack selection for commercial. So your commercial will go best by this audio clip. Imagine automatically for you for your next week. Group yourself by groups of two or three students, maximum three. And a small exercise for you is to identify three novel multimedia applications uh, we are using or we can use nowadays. Discuss why you think these are a novel and their potential Im impact. Why do you think these, they are unusual, they are uh, interesting, distinguished. And you do your homework preparing me a PDF, a document, Word document, a PowerPoint. You make your own video just like mine. I'm making it and using Active Presenter. And you upload it to Google Classroom for next week. Bye next week. Okay, goodbye class.